Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Uh, following up, uh, I just dropped a real brief uh, video on you guys about colorism and I'm going to be touching on that topic a little more in depth uh, to take it from a little bit more of a technical uh, perspective so you guys can see literally how over time and generations colorism has uh, been a toxic cancer uh, within the black collective and has been uh, immensely destructive. But what I want to talk to you about now is the black man lead rite of passage initiative. Uh, my baby, so to speak, my, my passion, my people are my passion, but positively impacting young black males so that they develop into strong black men is the deepest part of my love of what I do. Uh, because being a man, I know the challenges that we face. I know what it's like uh, to grow up without a father. Uh, in the sense of knowing my father specifically, I had an unbelievable man in my house, uh, the greatest man I've ever known, uh, who was biologically my great-grandfather, but legally my father. He adopted me along with my great-grandmother, and they reared me to the best of their ability all things considered and I appreciate them but I know what it feels like not to know why your dad isn't around and to uh, subconsciously place uh, your father's inattentiveness to you and awareness of you to associate it with your worth and, and to wonder why I know what that's like I know what it's like to grow up in the inner city where poverty is the language. I know what it's like to grow up to where violence is a necessity in the sense of surviving, being able just to get to school every day and get through school and home required you being able to defend yourself. I, I understand all of that. And so when I see the plight of my young black brothers, my the, these young black boys, and I see them, it, it, it became a passion. So I decided to learn what, what, what it was all about. Um, and in discovering uh, many of the pitfalls and contributors to what so many were tagging as toxic masculinity when the truth of the matter is it never really had anything to do with masculinity. The behaviors that are normally labeled toxic toxic masculinity have nothing to do with masculinity. They are toxic and, toxic and dysfunctional, uh, but they don't uh, have anything whatsoever to do with true masculinity or the attributes of true masculinity. It's just another way to attack the masculinity of the black man and to uh, undermine it. But in studying African American adolescent and young adult male violence, I found out some very unique things in studying it from a perspective of truly understanding it. Not just sitting up saying, okay, this is what's happening. Not just sitting up talking about the statistics of how many uh, black boys drop out of school. Not just talking about the statistics of how many end up in prison. Not talking about how many uh, kill another black man, how many are killed by a black man. Not just talking about those things, but gaining an understanding of why. Uh, I am a firm believer in the universal law of cause and effect. I don't believe in circum. Uh, I don't believe in consequences. I don't believe in happenstance. I don't believe that things just happen. Uh, I think that when you find something happening and it is of statistical significance, it has causality and you have to find the cause and you have to address it at the cause. Statistical significance in science means that there's something happening at a rate that cannot be reasonably attributed to coincidence or circle uh, or happenstance. Uh, and so when you have something as prevalent as black male violence specifically, uh, the, the, the high black male dropout rate, uh, the high incarceration rate, then you have to say, okay, there's a causality to it. And then you have to sit up and, and, and to eliminate uh, some things that are sometimes obvious speculations and postulations that black men are naturally violent. 
black men are naturally criminally criminal minded. Um, and then you start to have to look at some things. Criminality is primarily a uh, outcome or result of poverty. When you see high poverty levels, you see high crime levels. It doesn't matter the race. But when it came down to African-American adolescent young adult and young adult male violence, uh, on the works of some brilliant minds like Dr. Joy uh, DeGru, uh, Dr. Howard Stevenson, uh, and, and, a, and a few others, I began my quest to study and evaluate the behavior of predominantly prepubescent and uh, adolescent young adults. I mean, ad adolescent black males, but also young adult black males. And there were some common uh, influencers, some common contributors. The three that were going to always be present, uh, no matter what, were going to be what I call your core contributors and influencers, uh, and they were normally present in inner city youth that uh, displayed a certain level of proclivity towards violence. Uh, the the first is urban hassle. What is urban hassle? Urban hassle is what most kids experience just in their day-to-day -day life that other people who aren't a part of the inner city impoverished area of the community don't experience. Urban hassle is the gunshots in the middle of the night, the sirens in the middle of the night, the L train running right by your building, uh, the navigation of gang violence just to get to school, the navigation of drug activity just to get to school. Um, that's urban hassle in a nutshell. Urban hassle definitely increases the risk of becoming violent because of what it does to you uh, from a neurological perspective, from a subconscious perspective, from a mental perspective, it takes you closer to the edge. The next was the desensitization uh, modems, which number one was being the victim of violence. Being the victim of violence also desensitized you to violence, but also made you more likely to commit violence. Uh, there are a number of different uh, studies out there that reveal that. Okay, after uh, being after urban hassle and being a victim of violence was simply witnessing violence, observing violence at a level in which you become desensitized to it, will also increase the risk of doing why because it lowers the social norm that triggers your conscience. Your social norms are the standards by which you operate. When your standards say that there's nothing wrong with violence, the chance of you committing violence increases. If there's nothing within your conscience or your norms and standards that tell you that violence is horrible, violence is a very terrible thing, violence among your people are a very terrible thing, then when you are pushed, when you are angry, when you do, when you encounter real, a real situations that, in your experiences, have always resulted in violence, or as the culture or the the community environment says, then this is what you do when somebody does that. that you will tend to do that. Uh, but the two most powerful influencers were lack of proper racial socialization at number two. And number one, the feeling of being disrespected. There's nothing that drives a man to rage and violence like feeling the feeling of being disrespected. And I emphasize the feeling of being disrespected because re respect has been misappropriated as an idea, as a concept, as an ideology. The inability to truly define what respect means. Uh, a lot of people equate fear has been respect, so you want to make somebody fear you, that's not respect. Uh, but the idea of being disrespected is definitely the number one contributor. But the most manageable is you can't control as easily what makes a person feel disrespected, but what you can control is how they are socialized into their behaviors. And so, proper racial socialization is the preparation and the socialization into your social construct, which determines the norms and standards, the protocols and behaviors, what's expected, what's not expected, what's demanded, what's not demanded uh, of a child. So when you set that, basically, uh, historically, 
young men have gone through processes that we now refer to as rites of passage. That's what Black Men Lead is. Black Men Lead is a rite of passage initiative that starts with young boys as early as four and culminates in the crossing of this passage at 13, but it also follows up all the way to the age of 30 in true development in the teaching of man, uh, black, the principles of black, black manhood and so forth. But what you have to understand with socialization is when you socialize a young black male, they are significantly less likely to drop out of school, less likely to end up in prison, less likely to commit violence, and definitely less likely to commit violence against another black person, especially a black woman or child. Now, that is proper racial socialization. And I use the word racial because being socialized into black manhood is a unique experience. It's not like any other thing. Being a black man is the most unique experience in this world. The black man is the most targeted. Now, the black woman is probably the most vulnerable and experiences a great deal of harm, even from other black men. But the black man is the most threatening thing to white power and white supremacy. So he is the most targeted. And so you have to understand why so many things you're seeing now with you know the pushing of certain agendas. It's because that black men in uh, operating in their true identity, operating in their true role, operating in their true nature, present a problem. The black man in his true nature will defend what he is responsible for covering with his life. He will fight for, he will cover, he will defend, he will uh, sustain. And so what you have to do is you have to literally bombard the black mind with ideas that are uh, conducive of a lapse in responsibility, a lapse in accountability, a lapse in all of the things that are absolutely necessary to be a good man. And so it's our idea uh, and our focus and our point to teach young black males the importance of respecting and loving black women, uh, respecting and loving themselves, holding one another accountable, being there for one another, being supportive of one another, uh, owning businesses so that you are in control of your destiny and that you are not at the uh, whim of a system that does not um, support your interests, your values, interests, and principles to develop a mindset, um, a, a, a mindset and a concept and an idea of who you are at the core. Uh, I've talked about in several of my books the identity crisis. The identity crisis is the result of literally centuries of stripping black people of their identity, of their values, their interests, their principles, uh, their faith, their spirituality, their name, everything that they identify with. Take it away and then you re inculcate your values, your interests, your principles, your uh, your culture your standards of what is and then in the in the inculcation of these standards you create an idea that eurocentric is right european is right and then so now you have a people who are not european aspiring to uh, ascend to what they believe is ascension to the european idea of what is which they can never attain because they're not european and they, no matter what they do, no matter what they change, no matter how they operate, no matter where they live, they can never be European. So they operate from a predisposed um, inferiority complex. That inferiority complex creates self-hatred. That self-hatred drives so many other forces, including a proclivity and a, and, and uh, you see it right now. Randy Moss crying because John Gruden said something racially disparaging to another black man but when he's called out for crying in public in front of the people who want to see him broken his response is to want to fight the black man who called him out and that's the idea it's we turn on each other because we don't see the value in one another because we don't see the value in ourselves uh I, i've shared all this with you because i really need your support i really need your support 
gonna look in the description box and there's gonna be a way to give. Uh, the easiest way to give is through the Cash App account for the organization, which is uh, the dollar sign, capital T-A-G, capital O for Odyssey, capital P for project, uh, the odysseyproject21.com, capitalizing our words. So the Odyssey Project 21, uh, I don't know why I put .com, the, the Odyssey, dollar sign, the Odyssey Project 21. And all of the words are capitalized. Not all the letters, but the beginning of each word is capitalized. That's gonna be in the box. We need your support. We're pushing this agenda on an international level, but we have to start here in America dealing with uh, the proclivity of, our, proclivity of our children uh, to become violent and become targets of a system who want to incarcerate them and take them away from our community so they cannot be uh, positive contributors, forceful contributors, protectors, providers, leaders in our community. We need to replace the 1.5 million black men that are missing, but we have to replace them with those type of men who are ready to stand up and ready to perform. I am going to be pushing this to the tilt because my vision for this thing is huge. It is proven, it definitely works, but we have too many young black males out there who are completely lost. And there's nobody out there right now with a program that is geared up and set up to take them on a, on, on, on a, on a level to the next level to where they can become what they need to become and do it in a way that they cannot be shaken because guaranteed they're gonna be targets, guaranteed that it's gonna be some resistance because if we learn how to rise up to the potential of our design as black men, there's absolutely nothing on this planet that can stop us or our people. As we go, so do our people. Don't get me wrong, our women are exceptional at who they are. I have said this many times, we will only get as high as our women can spiritually elevate us, and we will only get as far as our men can physically lead us. It takes the both of us operating in our true spiritual and physical selves. It takes uh, a combination of masculine energy and fem feminine energy merging together to create this synced energy, or as it's better known, synergy, that allows us to do things that, uh, as, a, as a unit, as a fo focus, as a combined force, that we could not do on our own. We're exceptional and extraordinary on our own, but we are a beyond phenomenal when we connect. And it starts with what we're trying to do here. So show your love, go to the description box and contribute. You can use the links if you want to, and you want to go that way and give uh, over a protected, uh, you know, encrypted process. Or if you just want to send it via Cash App to our Cash App handle, the Cash App handle is in the description box. Whatever you do, we need you to show some love. We are doing a campaign throughout the end of the month. We're, we're always going to be accepted, though, but we're doing a campaign throughout the end of the month. The goal is to raise $20,000. Now, to me, that's a huge number, not because it can't be done. I watch people raise $20,000 for some of the craziest bull crap I've ever seen. Total the damn dog uh, needed surgery for a tumor on their leg, and they got $10,000 in a week uh, on GoFundMe. I see stuff like that all the time. Uh, so I know it's possible, but when you're talking about an organization that's been in, uh, fun been functioning for nearly 20 years and still hasn't raised, I think we are over, finally over 10,000. I think we may be somewhere around 11,000, but we're talking close to 15, 17 years. Then uh, you can see why the the amount that I put up is like this astronomical number to me, not because it is to me personally, because I see money like that moving all the time for a lot less, uh, something a lot less significant, but it's just never flowed. No, and my thing is, uh, those who really believe in what I'm doing, those who can understand the work I'm doing, those who can go to the site and see it, those who have read my books, The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, Academic Apartheid, Born in Captivity, Psychopathology is a Legacy of Slavery, and uh, The Undoing of the African American Mind. You know the importance of the work I do in this specific area. And so now I'm going to be calling on you to help us meet that goal. I'm gonna be calling on you to help us achieve $20,000 in two weeks. And 
it can be done. It definitely can be done. And there's more work to be done. There's so much more research to be done. There's so many more solutions that are sitting there waiting on us to go in and invest ourselves and get it done. The thing is, what are we willing to do uh, to make it happen? It's not going to happen through osmosis. It's not going to happen through magic. It's not going to happen because we wish it to. It's not going to happen because we press the like button. It's going to happen because we join in and we are committed to making it happen. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.